School choice, a hot button topic in Idaho. A group of Republican lawmakers is drafting school choice legislation, which they say would give families the freedom to choose what's best for their child. The draft legislation outlines something called an education savings account, ESA, where those families could use the state funding allocated to their child and apply it elsewhere, such as private school tuition and fees, technology needs, public school fees, or tutoring. News Channel 7's Abby Davis is here to break the draft down. And Abby, the big issue really is, is using public money for private schools. Well, Doug, some people actually say that that is unconstitutional under Idaho law and that it takes away much needed funding from public schools. But supporters of the draft legislation legislation say it's not like other school choice vouchers. Education in Idaho is broken. During a town hall Thursday night, a group of Republican lawmakers presented a piece of school choice legislation they're working on called the Freedom and Education Savings Accounts Program. We want schools to have accountability and it's our, not our goal to destroy or defund them, but to make them better, all schools better for our children. If passed, K-12 families could use state funding allocated to their child and apply it elsewhere. Such as tutoring or supplemental curriculums, mental health treatment, special education services and therapy, or tuition at a private school. Senator Tammy Nichols said all those options make an education savings account different than traditional school choice voucher programs. She estimated 1% or about 3,200 Idaho students would use the program. Each of those students would receive a nearly $6,000 scholarship. This gives parents flexibility and control to access learning services that work best for their children. It's not so much the tutoring or special education services people against school vouchers don't like. Just like traditional vouchers, ESAs siphon dollars out of our public schools in order to fund private school tuition. Republican lawmakers are asking for $20 million to get the program started, a program modeled after Arizona's education savings plan. But Reclaim Idaho co-founder Luke Mayville says that plan ended up costing people in Arizona a lot of money. The voucher proponents in Arizona predicted that it would cost about $30 million. It ended up costing over 10 times that amount. Not only that, Democrat Representative Sonia Galavis says there's a constitutionality issue. It says Article 9, Section 1, it is the duty of the legislature of Idaho to establish and maintain a general, uniform, thorough system of public free common schools. To provide a voucher or take money from the general fund in particularly our rural districts would be devastating to school budgets that already run on, you know, um, not enough funding to be able to provide and meet all the needs of students. Senator Scott Herndon doesn't agree. He said an education savings account gives families of all backgrounds, especially those in rural areas, more opportunities. Right now, the only people who have school choice in rural areas are people who are substantially well off compared to the average family living in my district. Herndon also addressed student performance and whether putting more money into education increases student success. It doesn't matter if you spend eight times more like New York or five times more like in California, the results don't really change. What needs to change is the options available. Galavis isn't so sure. Private schools do not fall under the same accountability umbrella that we do in public schools. So there would be no say or way to um, address how private schools are meeting the needs of students. If a family used the ESA to send their kid to a private school, the original public school would get 20% of the funding designated for that student. But Mayville says that's still not enough. The state of Idaho already has the Empowering Parents Grant Program. It's funded by federal coronavirus relief funds with the idea of helping kids recover from learning loss because of the pandemic. So parents can use that grant money for computers, internet access, instructional materials, tutoring, and more. Yeah, and the governor in his state of the state address is asking for $30 million more for the Empowering Parents grants this year. Abby, thank you very much. Of course, we'll continue to follow the debate about school choice going forward through the session.